This is AB from Blender52 and these are my top 5 tips to make your time in Blender that little bit easier. Tip number 1, how to move your vertices along the horizontal. We all know that if we want to move this face, we can press G and X and slide it out. We also know that if the cube has been rotated slightly, we can press G and XX to slide it along the local axis. But what happens if your rotation has been applied? Then when we try to move it, it no longer moves along the local axis. Instead, what we can do is press GG to slide, then press C and we can slide out along the parallel. Tip number two is a two in one. The first section tells you how to align your view to any specific face of your model. And the second part tells you how to insert a mesh to match that alignment. So if we wanted to put a little screw onto this section of the robot's head, all we have to do is select it, go into edit mode, select that face, then we're going to press shift number pad seven, which aligns your world view to the face. We are then going to insert our new mesh, the cylinder, and down here under align, we're gonna go view. Now when we scale that down, you can see that the cylinder is aligned to the face and we can now edit our little screw. So if we do that again, we come to over here, we're gonna select that face. We're gonna say shift number pad seven to align our view to the face. And we're gonna say insert cylinder, come down here to align view, and then we scale it down it's perfectly aligned to that face. Tip number three is smart face selection. Now we've all been there where we manually go around our model selecting every other face so that we can extrude them or bevel them or whatever it is we want to do. But there's actually a much easier way of doing this. If we select our first face and then select our next face using shift, we then just hold down shift, control and use plus and it will automatically repeat our selection and we can do that all the way around the model. Now this even works for bigger selections where say if we wanted a gap of three in between each, again we shift, we shift, shift control plus and it remembers that distance of three all the way around the model. So just a much easier way of selecting faces without having to manually do it. Tip number four is animating without keyframes. We all know how tedious keyframes can get, but there's an alternative. Blender knows maths, like Blender really, really knows maths. For example, if I say that this X dimension, which is currently 10 centimeters, and I say plus 35, it will automatically tell me that it's 45 centimeters. Likewise, I can say 10 centimeters divided by five, and it will tell me it's two centimeters. We can take advantage of this by using drivers for pretty much any field that's available in Blender. For example, if we come over to rotation and we type hashtag frame, we now have a driver. You can see it's turned purple. So if I press play, that cube spins up pretty good. You can see there's no keyframes and this thing will just keep spinning until my timeline runs out and starts repeating itself. Now we can take more control of these drivers by doing things like slowing it down. So if we were to type frame divided by 35, it would now rotate 35 times slower. So if we press play again, you can see it's now rotating infinitely without keyframes. Now in honesty, drivers can get pretty complicated, but I wanna show you a few other examples of what we can do with it. For example, if we wanted to make this ball bounce up and down, we can come onto the Z location and once again, we're gonna type hashtag frame to create our driver. And then we can write sin as in trigonometry, frame multiplied by 0.1. And now when we press play, our ball will move up and down, nice and fluid without any keyframes. So in the last example, just wanted to show a little practical application here. I've got my Charizard that I modeled and you can see this bit of smoke under his feet. 
that when we press play, you can see it actually swirls. And I'm doing this by using drivers on mapping nodes and textures. And you can see the same thing for the flames on his tail. So I'm able to use drivers to actually animate procedurally without the need for keyframes. So your last tip is a pretty basic one, which I'm sure a lot of you might already know, but I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I only found this out fairly recently and I knew it must have been there. I just didn't know how to do it. And it's the proper usage of the knife tool. So traditionally, I would come in and I'd say, okay, we grab the knife pressing K and we drag it across and press spacebar to, to make our knife and we've now got a cut along the face. And I always thought, oh, it would be so handy if I could cut through the entire box at once. Well, it turns out you can and it's really, really easy. All you do is you press K, you click, you then press Z or Z if you're American, drag it across press enter and you now have your cut the whole way across. Now this can obviously come in really handy if you want to do some, some crazy cut. So we've pressed K for our knife, we now press Z and now if we cut something out, press space bar, we now have that cut going through our whole object. So a good application of this is when we can no longer produce a loop cut. Because let's face it, if we had this cube and we wanted to cut all the way around it, much simpler than using the knife would to just be to throw in a loop cut. So if we press Control R, we've now got a loop cut and we can put it wherever we want. But in certain instances, loop cuts no longer work. For example, if we were to bevel this edge, we are now no longer able to add a loop cut all the way around. We would just get it on this one side. So what we can now do is come in, press K, press Z. And if we wanted to go in a straight line, we press C, drag it across, press space bar, and we now have our loop cut. Okay, so those are my five tips to make your life in Blender a little bit easier. If this is your first time watching a Blender 52 video, please head on over to blender52.com where you can learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do. We are a community aimed at helping you learn and grow through using 52 prompts across the 52 weeks of the year. We have awesome events and competitions, and it's just a really fantastic community for the Blender users out there. This is also the first video that we're releasing since starting up the Patreon, and I have to say a massive thank you so much to Unify, Killian Z, and Crow3D for being our first supporters. Until the next time, this is Blender 52. Cheers.